We are looking to confuse the body every single week, every single session as possible. Um, the ultimate goal is as long as you can keep the body guessing to keep it as plain and simple, that's how we allow the body to grow. So that does not. Welcome to the Career Nation Show, where you learn the strategies and tools to own and drive your career. Find out more at careertiger.com. Hello and welcome to the Career Nation Show. Today we have a very special guest with us. He is a certified personal trainer. He used to work at the San Francisco 49ers. And today he trains professionals across Silicon Valley and helps them with their fitness. Please welcome Cody Miller. Cody, welcome to the show. Uh, thank you, Abhijit. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure to be here. The pleasure is all mine and the audience who's going to get a ton of value from you talking about fitness. Um, before we sort of dive into this, tell us a little bit about yourself. How did this journey start for you? It has definitely been a long road. Um, fitness is something I just kind of jumped into myself when I was around the age of 19, roughly. Um, I remember my first getting a buddy pass from a partner of mine and instantly just kind of fell in love with the realm. Um, I've been training as a personal growth and personal motivation for probably about 15 years now. And being a native from Las Vegas and then transferring over here into Silicon Valley and seeing a whole different realm up here as well has been quite the journey. Um, I've been a certified personal trainer for roughly about four years now, uh, dealing with all different multiple clients. And it is an amazing, always constantly ever-changing uh, industry, and it's amazing to be a part of. Oh, that's awesome. Um, you know, having a focus on health and fitness is so important these days, <laughs> especially um, as we work so hard in our careers, it becomes so important for us to also focus on our personal health. And this has been a, uh, is something that I've always talked about in my personal coaching to a lot of people, as well as, you know, I've, I've seen a lot of awareness in general amongst people towards health. Um, but I think one of the, I would say, roadblocks for people to get into um, health and fitness is generally, I think there's a lot of excuses in general. Um, for example, uh, people would, you know, they may not they might not want to wake up early or uh, they may not want to actually go out and work out or go into a gym, et cetera. But I think if you go talk to any health professional, doctor, fitness expert, usually uh, the advice we get is diet and exercise. Now there's nothing wrong with that, with that, you know, advice per se, but I think a lot of times people just cannot get over the hurdle. Is it like a mindset issue that people cannot just get into sort of the diet and exercise regimen? Is it something else? Um, what, what are your thoughts on this? And it really does come down to the two things that you did just mention. You know, there are so many different avenues that we speak about when it comes to diet and exercise like that. Um, I can go on the street and tell a billion people those two things, just like you told me, and they still kind of sit there waiting and pondering on how I apply that to my daily living. And it really is about, number one, having that mental plan. Um, falling into the passion that I have, and I have that mental plan every day, waking up of, you know, what is my, going to be my focus today on myself? And I think once you almost set the time, you know, one of the big excuses, especially that I deal with um, here in Silicon Valley, is people trying to just, those, like you said, those roadblocks. It is trying to make that time for yourself, trying to push the excuses aside and make sure that you are a priority as well, which you are. And as long as we can make sure that we are the priority first, expand upon that is a fantastic way to go. Um, setting time for yourself, making sure that you can adapt to a different schedule. You know, the one thing that I came across recently was that fitness is not a destination. Fitness is a way of life. Fitness is a lifestyle you're trying to incorporate into yourself that the world is also trying to make that big step as well too. And it is completely true when they say mindset to a thousand percent because it really is before you can actually apply that physical science to the body. Oh yeah, that is so true. I think you dropped a lot of nuggets there. One of the things that really, I think really resonated with me is fitness is a journey and it's not a destination. Like I'm fit today, but I still need to keep being fit, having the right diet and exercise. Now to the average um, business or technology gal or guy, they may not want to run the Ironman tomorrow, 
but they want to be fit. Is there a way someone can just get started with fitness uh, that is more sustainable? How can, how can one start? Where should one start? I would honestly, again, that comes down to that motivation, that mental plan. Um, you know, I see so many people physically every day coming in and you can notice that they're more walking around and looking for a plan or looking for an avenue to start with. And when you, when you walking in there without having any roadblocks or anything mentally prepared, you're not ready to maximize your time. You know, if you would, a lot of things that I preach every day is about maximizing your time and making sure that you're not wasting your time in here. Um, you know, fitness is difficult. We are, again, speaking of a lifestyle change, you need to get over those hurdles. You, again, just need to, in the beginning especially, I would probably just say to start off with what, you can, what your schedule can accommodate. Plain and simple. If you, you know, just like the rest of us, we all have busy lives. If you are able to set as a starting point two to three days a week to start, I'm going to devote 30 minutes a day, for example, two to three days a week for my time, for my personal growth. Let the, see if the uh, schedule can accommodate that. And we can obviously take those baby steps in the right direction to progress to where you can get stronger every single day. But I think the one thing that people, a downfall for some is that they go in wanting to have that overnight pill. They wanted to have that, you know, that constant check and that, that overnight change immediately to their goal set, which is not the way it's going to be. So why overload the plate with something you can't sustain? So again, first steps for anybody out there looking to start is that first step is the initial step to get it going and that's what people everywhere in the world is trying to do so if you can make that initial step start with baby steps the initial with two to three days a week setting that allows a schedule and just blossom from there and that's the way to go cody that's great i mean i i agree with that that one should have a plan for exercising and kind of gradually step into it are there certain exercises that you recommend to people as they're starting out uh, you had mentioned that, yes, start putting a plan together, maybe two or three days a week and uh, go from there. Are there certain types of exercises that you would recommend to people who are just starting out? And that's where the fitness game gets interesting because every single person, again, is different. One thing I've noticed with all the different clients that I've dealt with is that one thing may work for one person, may not work for another. And this is why we offer that personalized customization plan towards you to find out what is beneficial for you. Again, I preach every day about maximizing our time and finding out what does work. And that's where that test and trial comes in. So for someone starting out, um, you know, they're going to be afraid of what we call that new stress, you know, feeling sore between 24 to 48 hours after a session or whatever the case may be, you are adding new stress to the body. You are now confusing the body to allow yourself to grow not only physically, but mentally as well. And it's tough to try to state exercises like that for someone to start out with. Um, but to be as plain and simple as possible is if you start with something more of working the front portion of the body. And again, that, that breaks down into so many different things. But an anterior focus, if you would, the front portion of the body. And then because of the realm here in the Silicon Valley of everyone sitting down and hunched over at the keyboard, we focus a lot on the posterior chain or our back's to open up our spine, open up our rib cage, straighten out the posture. And there are, again, there are so many ways of being able to attack both the front and the back of the body as well, but that would be a good way to start. That's awesome. So the anterior and the posterior part of the body and making right. sure people are able to maintain a good posture. That is so important. I mean, we are all crunched up on our laptops all day, our devices. Um, and it seems like we just keep adding our devices in our lifestyle, but that's a topic for another time. Um, you mentioned something there that kind of caught my interest. You said confusing your body. Tell me a little bit more about, like, does, can some exercises confuse our body? They definitely can. Um, yeah, anything new towards that new stress category will confuse the body. We are looking to confuse the body every single week, every single session as possible. Um, the ultimate goal is as long as you can keep the body guessing to keep it as plain and simple, that's how we allow the body to grow. So that does not mean every single week or every day that you go into a gym facility that you need to shock the system by any means or to confuse the body. But if you are allowing the system to adapt to the new movements to an extent, the body will always constantly confuse it. It's honestly applied the same with your diet as well. 
So when they say, you know, you need to eat clean, you need to watch your veggies like your mom's been telling you since you were five, <laughs> and you need to drink as much water as possible. It's the exact same thing. I, do, I live myself, when it comes to my intake, a 90-10% ratio as well. Same thing back to the muscles and to your body. You can have that 90% of keeping it clean. And that 10%, again, is shocking the system or confusing the body internally as well. So when I go grab 10 cookies and the system is not used to that, that is now shocking the system. And now we're sparking the system, same thing with movements, applying different movements to the body, confusing the system and allowing for growth. Oh, that's wonderful. So yes, we need to have a, a standard uh, plan for exercising, but you know, once in a while we have to break that pattern and confuse the body so that the body can grow. And so that's kind of the, kind of the concept behind that. Is that right? It definitely is. You need to have, again, that, that basic game plan. You don't want to stray away too much from that. You still want to make sure that you have your basic fundamental movements that you are doing each week from the anterior or the posterior or whatever body part you may be focusing on at the end of the day. Um, but again, trying to, and it can be just the little things too. From the last multiple years in the realm that I've been in, I've noticed that so many people try to take drastic changes to change things up when it can be just the smallest things. You know, for an example, if you're doing a chest press and you're doing a set of 10 reps, if you think about it, I haven't done a set of maybe 15 reps in let's say two or three months. That right there, an increase of five reps, something so very minimal change can be a huge shock to the system. Now the muscles are not, again, aware of what you've been doing. They're used to the 10. You've now just added five to add more pressure to the system. Again, shocking the system, constant confusion, and now the muscles are waking up. And again, that's where the growth comes in. Simple things from rep increase to rep decrease to just a slight change in weight. The very minimal things, again, fitness can be very, very basic, but very fundamental and very maximizing if you know what you're doing. Oh, that's such a fascinating example. Just changing the weights or changing the number of reps can give you a lot more value um, in your exercise. Is there a time or number of times um, a person should work? Like, for example, if that is, let's say, two to three times a week, uh, and then I increase it, is there a certain time of the day that I should be working out or... Um, number of times per week that I should kind of start to, uh, you know, start to uh, aim for. What is it? What is a good example as I look in this journey? And that's where the plan really does come down to basis to where, again, every single person is different. I would definitely, um, as a number one rule, and again, someone who's been in this realm for 15 years plus, is do not overload. So the very first step, I know that you're excited and you're in there and you're ready to gain to a new goal set and find that new mindset for yourself. And you have now cut out that time in your daily living to apply it for yourself as well. No distractions, you're allowed to de-stress, but don't overload the body to set the goal too high to where it can be accomplished. So if you're setting it for five days a week and you can only allow for two or three, then now you're not going to get to that goal set, which then in case in point will then back you up and not allow you to be as consistent as possible. Again, if there are so many things that I try to preach every day between maximizing your time, muscle growth, and the bottom line, no matter what your goal set may be, is consistency. If you can be hardcore for three to five days a week and you're going at it for three months, that is fantastic. And all of a sudden you fall off because the load is too much for you, then we're back to square one when it comes to a couple months down the road. So again, start with a plan two to three days a week if that allows, to, again, to, for the schedule. Um, if you, and just, I would play with it every single week. You know, I used to, my current schedule myself right now is I like to train five days straight Monday through Friday because my schedule allows that with a Saturday fun day. I do go outside and do a walk with my dog or something like that to keep me active for that Saturday, which is what we call active recovery, staying away from any external resistance, but just allowing the body to move and get fresh blood into the system. And then Sunday is a complete shutdown day. You need one day at least for the week, maybe two, to allow the body to fully recover and just to re remember what it feels like to go back in because you need to be as fresh as possible for the next day going back into your session. Nice. I like the recovery day um, the most. <laughs> but, um, Cody, you, you threw out a lot of things there. And, uh, you know, as you, as you are working with your clients in terms of, putting together an initial plan and then kind of ramping up that exercise. 
what value do you see with your clients? Like, how do they benefit from getting those movements in, getting those exercises, getting those reps? What benefits have you seen your clients receive? How has it created value for them? The number one thing I love to preach when it comes to anybody coming in is the de-stress portion. Um, I think because of how chaotic the world can be between, you know, personal interactions or work stress or home stress or whatever the case may be, you have so many things that are pulling you different directions that this one-on-one time for yourself or with me being with you at the same time as well is so, so huge to, again, de-stress, step away from your, your external environments. Um, but not alone with that too is the connection for me is the biggest thing. If someone can apply themselves and connect and I can show that they are willing to work and give me 100% of what they have and we can change lives. I had a client recently, one of my favorite stories actually, a couple months back, she just went on a family trip to New York. She has been with me for almost three years, training anywhere from her starting point was two days a week and she's now with me four days a week for 60 minutes a day, which is absolutely phenomenal. And she had shot me a text during her vacation with her family stating that she has done so much walking in New York and she was blown away by the fact that she was able to continue this with the family she was watching people on the streets of New York having to stop or hunt down to take a breather during this just massive walk and they were doing from point A to point B. And she had no problem continuing that. She has a goal set of wanting just to be healthy, just like we all do. And she doesn't care about weight loss. She doesn't care about anything else but that, but just being functionally healthy. So for her to be able to walk through that vacation with her family and not be out of breath and being able to feel like she can do that, she broke down in tears and that is why I do what I do. Oh, that's fantastic. And clearly, there's a lot of value there. People are able to de-stress. They are able to lead healthy lives. They're able to gain more strength. And quite frankly, it fuels them for their work, for their careers, um, and anything life throws at them. And that's, uh, that's phenomenal. And a big part of this, uh, you know, Cody, as you mentioned, is not just the exercise. It's also the diet. Um, and tell us a little bit more about diet. Kind of what's your perspective on diet? Um, kind of what do, what, do you, what do you recommend uh, to your clients? Absolutely. Um, and that's where we get down against the nitty gritty when it comes to the exercise portion is the 50% and the diet is the other 50%. I don't like to speak of the word diet itself because it always sounds like a restriction. So the way I like to look at it is more of like how can you clean up your intake? So the intake to the system, and one of my good buddies of mine is a nutritionist, and he or she may state that you need to eat for the body that you want on the external view. So if you know that you can sit down on the plate in front of you, if you have some nutrition behind every single thing that you're putting into the system, we can now maximize towards what we're looking to portray on the body or change. One of my keys that I've been preaching for numerous years too is constant fuel. A constant fuel, and I notice especially out here in Silicon Valley, is that people are so slammed back with back-to-back meetings or with long-day meetings or whatever the case of that schedule for that day, that let's say they wake up and there's not too much substance going on into the intake. So they wake up and they have a banana, for example, for breakfast. Okay, that's a nice start of a fast car, but we may need a little bit more substance in the body to really get the mind going as well their next meal may not be until about eight hours later because their full day is packed in meetings and now they're just constantly snacking. So when the eyes get bigger and we are now snacking, we're more grabbing for anything that's available or convenience. A convenience factor can be really break down because it's not really getting anything beneficial for us. So this is when it comes down to being more prepared for the day. So before I head into my uh, schedule for today, I make sure that I have three meals packed towards timing of what I have my schedule set up for me today. I'm going to make sure that I eat before I go into work. I'm going to make sure that every three to four hours, I'm giving the body some constant substance of fuel. There is a protein source, there is a vegetable source, and there is a proportion source of carbs to apply and give me some fuel to give me energy to survive through the day as well. As long as the body has constant fuel and you're constantly burning, this is going to do two things for us. Number one, and the most important, too, is upping our metabolic rate or upping your metabolism to allow the body to burn at a higher rate, which case in point will allow you, again, with the exercise tied it together, gain muscle and burn fat. It's a huge, huge, huge realm, and it's not very easy for too many people. The diet is obviously the hardest part. But if you can, again, preach that constant fuel every four hours trying to get something in the system, 
allow the eyes not to be as big to grab that pack of Oreos like I did over the weekend or grab something else like that too. And to stay as consistent as possible is going to be the key to success. Wow. That's a, that's a great commentary right there, Cody. Looking at it as a fuel and looking at diet as a intake rather than a diet. Those are powerful concepts. Now, what you just mentioned, do you recommend any types of diets to people? Like, is it keto? Should people do intermittent fasting? Is it paleo? Like, what, what should we plan from a diet standpoint? And like, for example, I had to go, let's say I have to go grocery shopping for next week. Like, what should I keep in mind in terms of the types of food that I should be planning for as part of my intake, to use your term? Yeah, great question. Great question. Uh, and again, I like to stick with the intake because when I say diet to someone, they always think of restriction. That's why I try to remove that to not have them think so much about what they can't have, but what maybe we can just bring into portion or proportion will be your key. Um, one thing that comes to mind is when it comes to, let's say you're going to the grocery store, a great tip or trick would be, is what I've been told to myself, is to stay on the perimeter of the store. If you think about it, staying on the perimeter of the store, going around the square portion of the store on the outside, you are staying away from frozen things from the inside. You are staying towards your produce sections. You're staying towards more of the dairy and things like that as well. It might be a little more healthy and, again, beneficial for you. Um, could be a trip, that, again, that I've, that I've learned by incorporating more veggies, incorporating more produce, and, again, just preaching that constant fuel. Um when it comes down, and what was the second part of that question? Yeah, if I like, how should we prepare our diets? Like, is it, and is should I stick to like keto or intermittent fasting or paleo? What are your right, thoughts right, on right. that? And that's a lot of that, you know, advertisements that people will like to hear about those fad diets, what I like to call them. Um, they're trying to pull you away. My dad is a great example. My dad always thinks that carbs are the, are the devil and that you should never put any carb inside the body, and that's the way to do it. And it's so not true. Um, I think everything comes down to portion. If you, again, when you're sitting down in front of you at dinner and you have a portion control, again, when it comes down to timing as well, um, you know, for example, if you head into a session and you know that you're going to go to the gym in about an hour and a half, you are allowed to provide the body with some carb source to give you some fuel to provide through your session along with a protein source that you are readily stating for the muscles. I would recommend that going into a gym session. Protein, carb source, give you some fuel. Afterwards, same thing. The body is now broken down. You're looking for some inter fuel to recover. You now need a protein source and a carb source also. So you have a pre and post day is what I would call it. If you're going to train that day to have a timing of a carb source before and after to provide energy and then to recover as well. Now, maybe during the day, we don't want to stick to that same realm when it comes to bedtime. Let's say it's 6 o'clock, 7 o'clock, you're starting to wind down before bed. We don't exactly need to overload with that portion control of the carb again before we go into bed because we don't want those carbs sitting heavy while we're fasting overnight. So this is where the portion comes down to. Now we need to maybe focus on bringing that portion of the carb down. Maybe the veggie source needs to go up as much as we may not like that. And then the protein source obviously can still be there. If we had protein source and a veggie source with a smaller carb at a consistent meal, we now have a portion control. We have substance and value and the intake is proper and we are now including water also. And again, that's a whole other realm as well. Another question, but water intake as well. And again, it all just ties in together. Great. And as we talked about foods in our diet or intake, yeah. is there, are there specific drinks that you recommend? Uh, water is obviously very important, staying hydrated. Are there any specific drinks that you would also recommend? Um, and that's a great question too. As much as I want to say to only stick to water, there are so many other benefits minus water besides ready or, you know, regulating the blood inside the body. Um, it does promote fat loss. And when I tell people that people's eyes get nice and wide and they have no idea, the more water that you carry and the body is full of it, you are promoting again, your metabolic rate to go up. You're promoting fat loss and you're promoting muscle gain. You're helping the body recover at the same time. So there's so many other key elements to that minus just drinking water to stay hydrated. Um, as far as when it comes to drinks too, I notice out here is that people love to grab those sugary drinks. They love to grab the high carb drinks. If you grab a soda, for example, I haven't had a soda myself and who knows how long because if I know of the downfall to that is I remember the feeling itself of having one soda with 
the 50 grams of sugar roughly and all the carbs that come into that one small drink of the soft drink, putting it into the system, I felt like I was being dragged down. I felt slow and I felt tired. And that's not the way the body should be. So if we can reach for something maybe on the healthier side of reducing that carb source and not worrying about so much sugar because all the empty sugar then turns into fat and sits on the system. And now we're negating the whole problem. And another thing too is when you are working as hard as you are, when you find that plan, you find the two or three days a week or maybe even five if you fall in love with the passion, when you love doing what you're doing, don't negate it by having your intake be off. You are working so hard for 30, from 60 to 90 minutes depending on your schedule and what it allows why go home and then have a soda or have something else that, again, is not proper fuel and now wasting your time? That's a great point. If you're working hard, if, you're, if you have a plan, you're working hard on your exercise, don't let a bad intake or bad diet ruin it. You have to build on that by having a great diet, managing portion control. Great really advice there. Just- and again, just to, you know, don't fall into the fad diets as much as you want to hear about that with the no carbon, this and that. And it, and it may work for certain people. Again, I think the, the bottom line is that cost of fuel. Making sure your intake is proper. Make sure that you're, you know, hydrating at all times. Um, portion control. Eating every three to four hours. Keeping constant fuel into the body. I always like to think about the movie Titanic. In the very bottom of the movie, in the boat, the guys are constantly shoving a coal into the boat to make sure the boat that is constantly running. And I always think about that every day myself. I'm constantly providing fuel to the system to make sure I constantly run at a proper technique and allow myself to buy to grow. Oh, that's a great example. Um, let me go back to the exercise a little bit and ask you about equipment. And if I'm starting out, should I be buying certain types of equipment? Uh, Should I be investing in like an $800 exercise machine? Um, There's a lot of choices out there, Cody. So what, in your opinion, is a good sort of equipment to start out with? Um, And uh, how can I sort of continue to invest in exercise equipment? That is a fantastic question. That's brought up quite often in quite some time. Um, I think the number one rule is if you apply yourself to, I would say, spend the money on a gym membership. To be honest, I would say to, you know, for me, I have to have somewhere to go. If I were to be here at home, I think you had that chances of being lazy and not being as consistent as you want to be. I think the home equipment is invaluable, to be honest. I think it is something that sparks an interest that you buy and you may use for 30 to 60 days. And then it sits in the closet and collects dust for the next 10 years until the next new edition of that or new improved movement may come out. I think you should, again, just like you're applying this, for your own personal value, commit to a gym, apply that because you are worth more than the gym membership itself. You are, you deserve that and you're well worth that. Find a gym membership. This allows you to now go to that gym to now you have that motivation to be there. That's the hardest part is just going for a hundred percent of the people is just to show up and be there for number one. So I would stay away from home equipment. I would go to and apply for the gym membership. Once you are there, I would start, um, as easy as it is to say with sticking with machines itself, and there are so many machines out there that have the description on there and are telling you exactly what is focused on and what the benefit is. If you can do any machines in a standing position, I think will be a huge key for you. Now, I say standing because we can incorporate the entire body. There are a lot of machines out there that require us if you're shooting, you know, focusing on the chest, for example, in a seated position. This is now taken away from leg strength and core strength. Everybody in the entire world is looking to improve their core and flatten their stomach. Every single person I meet every day is telling me the same thing. We all want to reduce the the fat in the stomach. I extremely get that. In the standing position, it allows you to be in a functional position, whether it's an overhead press, whether whatever the case may be, as long as you are standing, incorporating your balance training, you are working on the stomach or the core. So little tricks like that, standing machines, anything like that will apply more of a functional basis instead of more just a focus group. That's awesome. And Cody, you know, as you were explaining all of these things and this, using more standing positions to work the core, um, using a gym, etc., that leads me to my next question, which is should, should, what, should an individual, especially a professional who's busy, should that person get a trainer? And 
I, I have friends that go out to gyms that don't have a trainer and I have friends that do have a trainer. What is your position on this? So being a certified PT that I have been for four years, I definitely can't tell you not to get one. Um, I think the number one rule for a PT or for a trainer itself is motivation. So besides making that initial step to go to the facility itself or go to that gym is one of the hardest parts. If you have a connection with a buddy of yours or a friend of yours who happens to be a trainer, you guys have made that friendship and you've made that connection, you can trust that person. I think that is a great way to now keep you accountable and now you can apply yourself to be there each and every day towards what you have. You have scheduled that meeting for yourself and not only with yourself but with him or her at the same time. They are keeping you accountable. We are keeping you consistent and we are now throwing back to one of our earlier questions. We're throwing those new moves towards you, that new stress to keep the body guessing and growing at all times. We have so much value that we provide towards one-on-one -on -one training, towards buddy training, towards group, whatever your style may be, that you will see other changes that you may not have on your own. You don't have the science or the moves that maybe we do or knowledge behind that to help you go where you, know, where you need to go. I have so many clients of mine that have told me face-to-face, -face, when I go on vacation, and I'm, I'm a real person too, even though I love this realm that we're in, when I go on vacation, I say, would you like a plan for two weeks while I'm gone? And they say, no, because I won't do it. And it's so true. If we're not there, they're not going to apply themselves. So we are there for motivational purposes. We're there to meet and greet you each and every time. We're there to hold you accountable and keep you constantly guessing. A huge, huge value that not everyone can do for themselves. I totally agree, Cody. And quite frankly, working with you, um, at least for me personally, has been such a fantastic experience. I've learned so much. Um, you've always held me accountable and uh, you've always helped me to go to the next step and go you know, challenge the next barrier and overcome it. And it's just been a fantastic experience. So I would highly recommend it to anybody who's listening. So Cody, this, is, this part of the show is, you know, we ask every guest their favorite things. So we're going to launch into the favorites part of the show. We'll start with what is your favorite app? Ooh. Speaking of applications that I may use on a daily basis, um, again, being in my passion that I have every single day, I love watching people and learning. You know, I still have to have a learning source myself as well for new movements and for things to try and this and that. Um, something that I am on daily is Instagram. Um, as much as I'm not too big into the social media myself, I'm trying to more dig deeper into that, again, to help my personal growth as well. Instagram is probably one of my favorites currently, allowing to be able to connect with not only friends and family, but to follow. I follow two bodybuilders on particular ends, um, one back home from Las Vegas, a Vegas native like myself, and another one I recently started following throughout their daily lives, and they're doing the same thing for me you know, telling me tips and tricks on waking up and constant motivation and constant fuel. And they drive me to allow me to drive my business or my clients as well at the same time. So I think it's a great app. I totally agree. Instagram is great. Um, give us your favorite book. I, to be extremely honest and not the biggest one of the readers, I don't read too often as I should. Um, I have two. I'm going I'm to give you two of them. Uh, one is I love the Harry Potter series. Um, I recently just got them and I am working on book two as we currently speak very inconsistently to be honest. Um, but it's a great story that I just have to sit down that keeps me connected. Um, I also recently started getting into the comic industry and a favorite character to kind of add a little point B to the question there is I love the incredible Hulk who is another motivating factor for myself as well. And I've been starting to collect some of his books and starting to dig into the different realms of the Incredible Hulk. So when it comes down to the books, any Incredible Hulk story I've been diving into recently too. Oh, there might be a pattern there because for anybody who trains with Cody knows, his water bottle has <laughs> a picture of Hulk and he constantly refers to drinking water out of that as a Hulk juice. Um, so. <laughs> That's so true. Um, do you have a favorite restaurant, Cody? To be honest, on the top of my head, I always think about where I can get my next big cheat meal. You know, you work so hard during the week and you allow the body to get that 10% to dig into something that you normally don't have during the week. Um, my girlfriend, for example, does not eat red meat. So 
my protein source during the week is chicken, six to eight meals every single day. And it does get very bland, obviously. So any source that I can find some steak or other different points like that, a Korean barbecue spot is where I absolutely indulge to 100%. You know, when it comes to pork belly or spicy beef or whatever the case may be, is definitely one of my go-tos when it comes down to a cheat meal. That's awesome. Cody, it's been such a pleasure um, to have you on the show. We went over the mindset. We went over exercise. How can people start? Uh, we, you gave us so many tips about intake, not diet, and how can we figure out the right intake for us. And also, we talked a lot of, about exercise equipment. As we, as we wrap up here, what are your messages for Career Nation? What would you like to leave them with? Consistency is always going to be number one is what I've been trying to apply to myself as well. You know, it's very, very difficult to carve out that out. I train myself 90 minutes a day, five days a week with two days off. It's very difficult. If you are allowed to take that initial step and find that right time for you and be as consistent as possible, you're going to get past, you know, all different roadblocks and different realms that you never thought was possible just by applying yourself. Uh, I also do it too, to make sure that I can kind of stand out and be a example for someone who may not have that chance. Um, so again, just being consistent and again, just remembering too, this is a journey. If you are not willing or ready to take that step to do a complete lifestyle change, then you're in the wrong realm. This is something that doesn't happen overnight. There are no fad diets, again, to touch on some key points we already talked about. Um, you know, it's, it's again, down to the, to the intake. Don't think about it as what you can't have. Just think about portion control and it will notice a dramatic, dramatic difference in you. Um, De-stress. Enjoy, especially in the beginning, too. One thing we didn't touch upon is that the, some of the positives would be the internal. You know, people want to see, they always come in and ask me, how fast can I notice to lose 10 pounds and this and that? And you're kind of in the wrong mental breakdown when you start. In the beginning, you're looking for better sleep at night. You're looking for better energy. You're looking for a lot less stress. You're looking for a lot of internal changes will then apply to the external just over time. So stay dedicated. Enjoy yourself. Keep yourself motivated. If you need a trainer, that's what we're here for, to keep you motivated and apply yourself. Um, and, you know, just have fun with it. This is, a, this is your time. This is your personal time. And don't look at it as a chore. Wow. Cody Miller, thank you so much for being on the show. And we hope to see you for hopefully round two at some point in time. Thank you so Most much. Most definitely, Abhijit. Thank you.